trying to build the next MySpace. Hey there, my name is Xavier, and at the beginning of this year, I quit my job making 3D websites for some of the biggest brands in the world to follow my dream, building a social network for music fans. I named it Desktop FM. There's been some pretty cool social music apps before, like MySpace that once had most of the traffic on the internet, Turntable FM, which allowed strangers to become DJs in virtual rooms, Last FM, which showed your listening history to anyone interested to see, SoundCloud, which became kind of Twitter but for music tracks, more recently Boiler Room, which broadcasts live DJ sets to everyone on the internet. But I feel like all of those are kind of dated. I mean, Boiler Room is already 14 years old. And the thing is, nowadays web browsers can do amazing things, like a real-time 3D clothing configurator, or a website with 1 million checkboxes that can be toggled by visitors anywhere in the world or a desktop that can be controlled with your hands using the webcam. Yeah, I built that one. I think listening to music online should be more like going to the clubs. Don't get me wrong, nothing should ever replace partying together, but I think there should be an alternative for when that's not possible. An alternative that should take into account self-expression, community and having fun together. In this video I'm going to show you how I built user profiles for my app. Maybe you have guessed, profiles will be desktops, and they will be super customizable. A bit like in the MySpace times, but without the need to write HTML and CSS. For this first version, users will be able to design wallpapers and add stickers. But before I show you how I built those, I need to show you what I have already built. I want Desktop FM to be a place where people can unwind after a long day of work. So instead of profile pictures, we have 3D avatars. This way it's easier to detach from day-to-day -day life. Half Tropic helped me out with some concept art. He's an amazing illustrator, go follow him on Twitter. Then Paul helped me out with bringing them to 3D in Blender. Finally, I added blend shapes so they can be controlled like animojis using the webcam. If you want to know more about this, let me know in the comments. Something else I had already built was the basic architecture for the app. I am using Vue and Nux for the frontends and Pocketbase for authentication and the backend. Okay, back to desktops. I had to build wallpapers and stickers. I started with wallpapers. I decided that there could be a few patterns and images to choose from and users could also pick a main color and the secondary one. I made some previews in Sketch. That should give me enough variation. By the way, shout out to Race GXO for letting me use some of his images. Once I was set on that, I had to design the user interface. I have been using this dynamic card that morphs and shows the relevant state of the app. One of my biggest creative inspirations is Teenage Engineering. They have a scenes called OP1, and I love how they did custom designs for each module. Like them, I want to take the time to make each screen unique and fun, so I went ahead and tried a lot of options. I ended up choosing this one. The left side is a pattern picker. The circle in the middle selects the main color, and this bar at the right shows the secondary color options, which change depending on the pattern and the main color. I was not sure where to add the image picker. I ended up deciding to put it as the last option in the pattern picker. To make that more obvious, I show three dots. The render behind the card is done in 3JS, so I coded some shaders in GLSL and a crossfade transition. This is the result. For the stickers, I wanted to do something special. I wanted them to feel like physical objects in a satisfying way. Another obsession of mine is to bring game feel into more traditional user interfaces. I started with a plane in 3JS and I made it draggable. In order to mimic the physical world in codes, oftentimes I use springs and inertia. Then I wanted to add wiggle bones. Wiggle bones is a technique that makes objects move smoothly and feel alive. In order to use wiggle bones, we need a rigged mesh. So I went to Blender. I created a plane, subdivided it, added a few bones, automatic weights, and I smoothened it. Then I brought it into 3JS and used my wiggle bones library. This already feels much better. Then I added a few of these planes to the scene and... Boo! This is called Z-Fighting. When rendering 3D scenes, objects can intersect. Because there is no real physics, they don't hit each other. And when that happens, we get this ugly effect. To solve it, I had to make sure they don't intersect with each other. So I put them on an ordered array. Added a bit of Z-Offset depending on their position in that array. And made sure that when we drop a sticker, it's moved to the last position of the array. So it's always on top. Amazing, problem solved. But there was another issue. If we drop the stickers in the center of the screen, we cannot grab them ever again, since they are behind the cart. So I added a force that pushes them away. All right, time to make those look more like stickers. Instead of post-its, I went to sketch again and created some textures. Thanks to CQHRS for letting me use these amazing CAD illustrations. 
The other textures are based on music labels and artists that I like. Then I brought them to code and created some materials based on mesh standard material from 3JS. I think it looks pretty nice. And for an extra touch, I created a glitter shader for those special ones. One last thing I needed was a way to navigate to different states. So I created a dock inspired by Mac OS. That never gets old. And also added an icon here to the bottom right that goes to a random user. And that's all. If you want to follow my process while I build Desktop FM, make sure to follow. See ya.